Sunday, the 29th of April, 1945, one week before the end of World War II in Europe. The US 7th Army's 45th Infantry Division liberates Dachau, the first regular concentration camp built by the Nazi government. The soldiers smell not only human excrement, but also decaying bodies, causing many of them to cry or vomit, as they find piles of impossibly malnourished corpses, more than 30 railroad cars filled with thousands of dead bodies and 30,000 survivors, most of them severely emaciated, who look like walking skeletons. Thousands of them are sick and will die from typhus epidemics and starvation during the months following the camp's liberation. One of the most brutal SS officers to serve at Dachau is Hans Loritz. Hans Loritz was born on the 12th of December, 1895, in Augsburg, then part of the German Empire. Loritz was 18 years old when the First World War began, on the 28th of July, 1914. He volunteered to join the Bavarian 3rd Infantry Regiment, and during the war he was wounded several times and was promoted to be a non-commissioned officer. In 1917, he volunteered for the German Air Corps and was accepted as a gunner. He was shot down over France, where he was held as a prisoner of war. Although the First World War ended on the 11th of November 1918, Loritz was released from French captivity only in 1920. Back in Augsburg, Loritz, like his father before him, worked for the Augsburg police. In 1927, following several disciplinary issues, he was dismissed and became a debt collector for a gas company. Hans Loritz joined the Nazi party in August 1930 and the SS one month later. On the 30th of January 1933, Adolf Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany by German President Paul von Hindenburg. Immediately after Hitler came to power, Germany became a dictatorship and the Nazi regime quickly began to restrict the civil and human rights of the Jews and establish the first concentration camps, imprisoning its political opponents, homosexuals, Jehovah's Witnesses, and others classified as dangerous. Unlike prisons, with which they are often inaccurately compared today, concentration camps were independent of any judicial review. The first such camp, Dachau, was established in March 1933, less than two months after Hitler became the Chancellor and Loritz joined its staff shortly afterwards, becoming one of its guards. His initial task at Dachau was to oversee junior SS volunteers from Austria, and he quickly began to admire and idolize the new camp commandant, Theodor Eicher, who introduced a system of regulations which inflicted brutal punishments on prisoners for the slightest offenses. Eicher ensured that the Dachau camp served as a model for all later concentration camps. It also became a training center, or a school of violence, for SS guards who were deployed throughout the concentration camp system. During the first year, the camp had a capacity of 5,000 prisoners. Initially, the internees were primarily German communists, social democrats, trade unionists, and other political opponents of the Nazi regime. However, over time, other groups were also interned at Dachau, such as Jehovah's Witnesses, Roma and Sinti people, homosexuals, repeat criminal offenders, as well as so-called asocials, whom the regime incarcerated because they could not or would not find gainful employment. In July 1934, Loritz was given command of Esterwagen concentration camp, located near the German-Dutch border. Most of the prisoners in Esterwagen were political prisoners, many of them communists. The most famous was Karl von Osiecki, a German journalist and political activist, who was sent to Esterwagen in 1933. For his work in exposing the clandestine German rearmament, he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1935. However, Osiecki was forbidden from traveling to Norway and accepting the prize, and after years of starvation, mistreatment, and torture in various Nazi concentration camps, Osiecki died three years later, in 1938 in Berlin. As a commandant of Esterhagen, Loritz made camp rules stricter, interrogated prisoners, and ordered torture. In 1935, he was promoted to SS Oberführer, and after the close of Esterwagen, Loris returned to Dachau as camp commandant in April 1936. The number of Jewish prisoners at Dachau rose with the increased persecution of Jews. On the 10th and 11th of November 1938, in the aftermath of Kristallnacht, when Jewish homes, businesses, synagogues, hospitals and schools were ransacked by the Nazi SA and German civilians. Almost 11,000 Jewish men were interned there. Most of the men in this group were released after incarceration of a few weeks to a few months, 
many after proving they had made arrangements to emigrate from Germany. Lawrence was known as one of the most brutal camp commanders at Dachau, personally cruel. He allowed barbaric behavior by the guards. In the camp, he introduced the use of strapado torture devices, which was extensively used during medieval times, for example during the Spanish Inquisition, to torture witches. The victim's hands would be tied behind their back, and the victim would be suspended by a rope attached to the wrists, typically resulting in dislocated shoulders. Alfred Hoepsch, who spent eight years as a prisoner at Dachau from 1937 to 1945, said about Loritz the following, He was a devil, a Nero, a beast in human form, feared and hated. Even his henchmen hated him. Besides being a sadist, Hans Loritz was also corrupt, and his inclination for self-enrichment and fraud got him into trouble with the SS administration office in Dachau. Among other things, he had prisoners build a game park without permission, and he used his own prisoner commando to build his private villa in St. Gilgen on Wolfgangsee in Austria. In July 1939, Loritz was sent against his will to Graz. The Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939, when Nazi Germany invaded Poland. Whilst in Graz, Loritz tried to return to concentration camp service, and it worked out in December 1939, when he was transferred to the Sachsenhausen concentration camp. On the order of Heinrich Himmler, in March 1940, he became the camp commandant in the place of Walter Eisfeld. Sachsenhausen held prisoners of many nationalities, but Hans Loritz treated especially Jews and Poles in a bestial manner. On his orders, many of them died as a result of brutal beating at work, and about two trucks per day were filled with corpses that had to be burned first at the crematorium near Berlin, and later, when a crematorium was built in the Sachsenhausen main camp, the corpses were burnt there. It was a common practice to tie the prisoners' hands behind their back, then hang them from a pole on a hook so that after a few hours, the person would die in terrible pain. In winter, some inmates would be drenched with water via rubber hose, stuck down their collar, and then they were ordered to stand outside until they died. In June 1942, Loritz organized the killing of more than 10,000 Soviet prisoners of war by shooting them in the neck. At Sachsenhausen, prisoners were subjected to horrible working conditions, and whoever had no strength left and stopped working was immediately kicked and beaten by the SS guards. On one occasion, a Polish inmate stopped working when his strength failed him, and as a result, he was severely beaten by the SS guards. Unable to endure it anymore, he tried to escape, but during the escape he was seriously wounded in the stomach by a guard. On Loritz's order, he was put by the main gate, and when the working column returned to the camp at noon, every prisoner had to pass by and look at him. Loritz stood next to him with a whip and made sure that the order was obeyed. Then the injured Pole was taken to a ward nearby, where he was assisted by fellow prisoners, who gave him makeshift bandages on the injured stomach and drinking water. At one point, Loritz came into the ward, saw the man lying down, and when it was explained to him that this was the Pole who had been wounded during the escape, he said, What? Is this pig still alive? Then he jumped on his stomach and began to trample on him, while at the same time beating him about his face with a whip. After a short while, while the beaten pole was still alive, on Loritz's order two other inmates grabbed the wounded man by the legs and dragged him through the ward, down the stairs, across the yard into the mortuary. On a different occasion, another Polish inmate, who happened to be a colonel and was highly respected among the other Poles, received a food package from home. He shared the food with the other prisoners, and the next day there was an inspection of the cupboards, and an unwashed vessel was found. This was immediately reported to Hans Loritz, who wanted to punish the respected Polish colonel. The next morning, during a special roll call, the inmates were told that they were the ones responsible for various diseases in the camp because they were living in dirt, and the previous day, a dirty vessel had been found in the cupboard of one Polish colonel, and for that reason the colonel would receive an appropriate punishment to set an example. A table was brought out of the yard, the colonel was stripped naked and bound tightly across it, then a five-litre bucket without a bottom was placed on his stomach, and a live rat was put into the bucket. The top was covered with a board, and then the whole thing was tied tightly to the table so that the rat could not get out of the bucket. The rat began to eat into the colonel's belly and drill a second exit through his guts. 
He shouted and screamed his lungs out, begging to be knocked out or shot. However, Loritz did not react and just stood by the whole time until the rat exited through the side of his stomach. The colonel remained tied to the table outside, where he died a few hours later. In 1942, however, Loritz was again investigated because of corruption allegations. Just like during his time at Dachau, he continued to illegally enrich himself and he used entire commandos for private purposes. Although the charges against him were in the end officially dropped, Loritz lost his position as a concentration camp commandant. He was then sent to Norway and as a specialist in his field, was responsible for all Norwegian camps under the SS jurisdiction. In the detention centers for Norwegian partisans, almost two-thirds of the prisoners died from the brutal conditions by March 1943. After the SS camp system was dissolved, Loritz organized plant protection for Norwegian factories against acts of sabotage. Before the end of the war, in April 1945, Loritz fled to Sweden with false papers. After his arrest, he was transferred to Germany, where he was interned by the British occupation forces and eventually identified. When he found out that he would be transferred to the Soviet Union to face justice for the mass murder of Soviet prisoners of war, he decided to end his life on his own terms. Hans Loritz was 50 years old when he committed suicide on the 31st of January 1946 at the British internment camp of Gardeland near Neumünster. Loritz, a sadist who tortured innocent prisoners in the most brutal manner, never faced justice for his crimes. There were no tears shed for Hans Loritz. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.